Schwartz greeting you as master of ceremonies of this Hollywood review. And now may I present the screen's biggest litless star, little Mitzi Green. I'm glad school's over. Listen, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Mother and Daddy want me to sing a song all about toys and dolls. But I don't want to. I want to sing a grown-up song. And to be in the right atmosphere, I think I'll put on my evening gown. <laughs> Treat another human so unkind Didn't you sneak away and leave a note behind Was that the human thing to do Oh, I thought that yours was such a heart of gold But after I was told on all the tales you told Didn't you let your kisses turn from hot to cold Was that the human thing to do Now I'm not trying to catch things up What's been done must be Lord, I wouldn't even treat a pup The way you treated me, you rascal, you How could anybody be so darn unfair? You let me hang around until I learn to care Then you even laugh and leave me crying there Was that the human thing to do? Was that the human thing to do? Now, was that the human thing to do? Miss uh, Ginger Rogers has composed a little novelty number entitled, uh, Used to Be You. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret. She has dedicated this song to uh, my friend, Jack Oakey. <laughs> Good luck, Virginia Catherine. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. Oh, say, just a minute. Have you forgotten something? Oh, yes. No, my hat. I remember the girl who used to be you. That kind of a girl would always be true. She flirted, she laughed, she danced all divine. No fingers were crossed when she said she was mine. Oh, where has she gone? Who oh, you to be you? I find in her place a stranger who knew the girl in my mind. I love my life through the girl who used to be you. I hope not too many of you are good at lip reading. We've been asked to show a scene uh, typical of nightlife in Hollywood. For this purpose, we have uh, enlisted the services of the famous Brock Sisters and Jack Duffy. <laughs> Help me. 
Love's always been my guest. Let how I may, I was made that way. God help me. Then closer to me lay, and if there. Falling in love again, never want a tool. What a girl to do, can't help me. Well, you really can't blame Jack for falling. I could fall for them myself. An extra star of radio, stage, and screen, the world's greatest banjoist, Mr. Eddie Peabody. Hello there, pupils. Hello, Eddie. You ready for the show? Yes, dear teacher, but there's nothing to make us out. Well, hurry up and ask it, because I'm raring to go. The question is, dear teacher, what makes the clothes for? Now, that's the foolish question. You embarrass me. Me, 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 me. Girls, I'd like a chord in G, please. One, two, three, four. That's the chord in G, folks, regardless of what you think. assures us that they will appear before the night is over. Trusting you enjoy the show, I thank you very, very much. Oh, say, Eddie, could, could, could I talk to you for about a minute? A minute? Yeah, just one minute. You see, uh, uh, you see, uh, 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 I haven't got time now. Wheeler and Woolsey? Ah, hello, Eddie, my lad. Hello. 
on your mind, son. What's Don't on you mind? know you go on in two minutes? Oh, well, I, you see, Eddie, we're a little bit stuck. Now, if you'll help us out, I mean, we'll be on there in two minutes. What do you mean? Well, now, we've got to have somebody to kind of work up a gag for us. Now, the first thing you do, Eddie, will you do it for us? Well, if I have to, yes. Okay, now, here's what you have to do. Now, look, Eddie, it's very simple. You stand here like this, see? Look, standing here with the foot out like that. Yeah, get it out a little bit. Yeah, a little more, a little more, Eddie. That's it. Attaboy, attaboy. Now, look, Eddie, put the hand on the hip like this. Attaboy. Now, turn the head like this. Are you all set now? Yes. Well, stay that way, you big sissy. Yeah. You ready, Poo Poo Padu? How's the house? It's packed. Oh, well. What are you going to sing tonight? Oh, of course, Poo Poo Padu. That's what I thought. Three minutes, Jackie. Something just happened. Helen Kane just sprained her ankle, and I pulled Jackie Cooper's arm so hard, I dislocated his shoulder, and you've got to go on next. But I haven't my public face on yet. Look, I'll go up and tell him to do an encore, and there'll be plenty of time. But have you decided what you're going to do? Well, let's see now. I think I'll do the Chinese poem. A Chinese poem? Yes. You know, the one that goes like this? Hon ye de lan gong, ye ye bum, pan man, flung hot. Did you like that? Oh, that was lovely, but uh, there was one word in there I didn't like. Which one was that? Uh, uh, oh, never mind. They won't know the difference anyway. You know, it's awfully nice of you to do this for me. Well, I'm only too happy to help out. Now, I'll go up and tell them to do an encore, and everything will be fine. Right, Earl. Eddie, I just got to talk to you. Just, you got to listen. Tanner, will you listen to me? Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, well, you see, you see, Eddie, see, I, 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 I,
pardon me, will you please? Uh, I just saw your act in the wings. And, well, I think you're swell. <laughs> you know, uh, you're my favorite. Uh, That's very kind of you. Would you autograph my program? I'd be very happy to. And uh, you too, please. Oh, thank you. You know, uh, I've always liked you in pictures, Mr. Fairbanks. <laughs> and uh, you too, Miss Talmadge. Tom, you're a great pistol shot. You hit everything out there but Jimmy Durant's snorkel. Huh. I don't see how I missed that. Neither do I. Are you leaving? Well, I'm thinking about going out. Are you all alone? Oh, no, I got my friend here. Come on, fellas. Yourself, Eddie. Yeah. Certainly I was a boy. 
Well, here it is. Join us today. So long, Eddie. Come on. I'll take a swim, darling. Okay, honey. I'm on my way. Good morning, Miss Pickford. Good morning. Have you got any mail for me today? I don't know whether it's male or female, but it's alive. And it came all the way from China. From uh, China? Mm, I think it's from one of your fans. I bet it's from Fu Manchu. I don't know. We'll open it and see. What a darling. <laughs> Hello, fella. <laughs> Hello. Isn't he sweet? Hey, but he looks thirsty. Oh, poor little fella. Well, I'll give him a drink just as soon as I get to the studio. That'll be fine. Uh, are you going to the studio now? Yes, and I'm in a great hurry. Would you mind giving a fella a lift? Of course not. Come on. Thank you. Turn on the radio, Eddie. Oh, great. See if we can get the ball game. Wouldn't you rather have some music? I think Bing's on this morning. That this old tradition's not a play, but just a proposition. All the old Country highway or a moonlit yard. It could be in the parlor when the lights are burning low. It could be in the movie in the very last row. You have just heard Bing Crosby broadcasting from the studio soundstage in Hollywood, California, where Bing is making another musical picture with the usual quota of Cosmo and Johnson sensational song hits. Tune in tomorrow at the same hour, and Bing will croon some of these new numbers for you. This is station KMX, Hollywood, California. Well, thanks very much for the lift. Not at all. Maybe I can do as much for you sometime. You never can tell. <laughs> Hello, Mary. How are you? Swell. Just heard you singing. Way out here? See, I thought those stages were soundproof. I even heard you up in Beverly. In Beverly Hills? Mm -hmm. Oh, I catch on. You've got a radio in your car. That's it. You know, I'm a radio fan. You're a radio fan. Well, then we're even because I'm a picture fan of yours. Great. When are you going to make another picture? I came down to work on a story today. You're writing the story? Yes. Say you couldn't find a part in there for an old broken down singer, could you? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you take care of me and I'll take care of you on the radio. Now that's the bargain. So. Well, Tony, there's one thing we can do without the assistance of a supervisor. And all they're all is trying to tell Tony how to act like a horse. Everything all right in there? Oh, Tom. Oh, Eddie. Kind of strayed off your range, didn't you? A little. What are you doing over here? Well, you don't think I'd let you go on a world tour without saying goodbye, do you? Huh. By George, Eddie, that's awful nice, really. I sure appreciate it. 
Come on, boys, hold it up here and let's get a drag of it. I bet, uh, I bet you, you're going to take a, a lot of nice cold water along with you to drink, aren't you? Or something? Water? Oh, that's enough for the cars, but the boys have a fine box of good cold beer back there. They have? Yes. Well, so long, Eddie. So long, Tom. Marlene Dietrich. Y la favorita artista de todos los países de habla española, Lupe Vélez. Jung Guac Ming Sing. Anna Mae Wong. O Greta Garbo. Fayez Poussin. Til Film Warden. Lise de l'Etoile de France, Maurice Chevalier. And his American prima donna, Jeanette MacDonald, who appears in this issue of... Hollywood on Parade. Every fan magazine has a portrait of a star on the cover. On the next page is the index. In this particular instance, I am the index. Who are you? I am Brenna. I know, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Dracula, Fu Manchu, Frankenstein, Sean Doo. <laughs> I consider a very unusual collection. And here it is. Penguins. Funny little bird found all the way from the South Pole to the Equator. There are none at the North Pole. I've collected these both in America and in Europe, and so many of them have been sent to me by fans. Their chief value to mankind, as far as I can determine, is to appear in pictures made by explorers to the South Pole. This one was the star of a Zane Grey production. He died as a result of too many camera shots. Here in Hollywood, an artist sculptured a stampede to beautify an unsightly city lot under the sponsorship of Ken Maynard. Well, Mr. Anderson, your work's shaping up here pretty good, isn't it? You got a lot of longhorns there, all right. Tongue sticking out of that critter there looks mighty lifelike. A lot of nice stock there. Who, oh boy, who? Oh. Well, I tell you, I guess I better get on old Tarzan and go home. Oh, yeah. You want to hold him down for me? I guess I can make it, though, now. Oh, boy, ho, oh, Tarzan. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Easy, boy. Easy. Look out now. I'm coming out of here snorting. Come on, Tarzan. Let's go to the crowd. Come on.
personalities on this program. In view of the fact that magic is so popular in the present day, I have called upon Arlen the Great, the world's foremost mystifier, who will act in my place. I thank you. <laughs> Professor, I have just given you a very flattering introduction. And if you fail, it'll be just too bad for me. Great Arlen never failed. I have just returned from Egypt in the mystic shrine. And I have brought with me an Egyptian mummy.
This mummy is over 3,000 years old. You'd never believe it. What are you doing here? Believe it or not, I'm still waiting for the right number. I am still open and Jane Cooey from Alabama, Morgan. That's right. That's right. Behold, the beautiful princess, Frances D. Where am I? In Hollywood, the land of magic. And now, princess, I want you to broadcast to this vast, unseen audience and tell them how it feels to be buried for 3,000 long years on the Great Sahara Desert. Well, folks, for one thing, I, I never was so thirsty in all my life. Then you shall have a drink. Shall it be water, or shall it be wine? Wine, please. No, I said wine. Then it is wine. NJ. What do you expect from homebrew only a minute old? I think you're simply marvelous. I wonder if you could make the King of Hearts come to life. Certainly. Are you here again? And why not? I'm the king of hearts. Oh, no, no, you're not. not. Don't worry, girls. I'll get rid of him. Don't be too sure about that. I'm can't do the magician. Tie me up. Bind me as tight as you will. And I'll free myself in three seconds. I am up. That was my mistake. I must have spun it the wrong way. Here he is, girls. The king of hearts of many countries, Clark Gable. Military officers of various nations are congratulating him on his great popularity in their respective native land. Spin of the card, the Queen of Diamonds, Tallulah Bankhead will appear. Why didn't win? 
Presenting the Jack of Clubs, Lou Cody, and the Joker of any deck, Buster Keaton, on the lower deck of Buster's new dry land cruiser, which contains everything from Pullman beds to the proverbial kitchen sink. Admiral Keaton navigates all over Southern California without a comfort. It looks as though the boys were going to make port, or is it just plain home brew? Now, ladies and gentlemen, I shall return to my mystic kingdom. Can you? Available training, we have secured the services of the world's champion flag pole sitter, Shipwreck Kelly. In connection with the picture Sitting Pretty, we are sending you throughout the country to set new records in this high art. Girls, the aerial endurance athletes. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Shipwreck. They're all yours. Now, girls, as a sport, flag pole sitting beats. Tennis, swimming, or golf. Who wants to go up for you? I do! I prefer blonde. Can I go? Oh, hey. Go up your head. You All right, Gordy, come on. Let's get up. Put your foot right there. Raise yourself. Throw your leg right over. Okay. Gee, this is ducky. You can see the entire studio up here. Get relax. What's the trouble, Mr. Brando? Oh, I, I, I tell you, Mr. Butler, I work awful hard, but I, I can't lose my stomach. Well, why don't 
your diet. Oh, the color is all right, but it sticks out too far. No, what I mean, deep breathing, contraction, relaxation of your muscles. Is that so? What is that subtraction with the muscles? Well, I'll have my Swedish instructor explain that to you. Oh, yeah. that'll be fine. Ah, we started here. Oh, talk about it's totally fair, Herr Brandel. Talk about it. John, I want you to explain to Mr. Brandel in Swedish just what we do. Had a fair opinion of gymnastic then, Mr. Brandel? Yeah, I wish. Do you stay a little bit in soap, even by the little gavete, to stole fracking from me? Oh, I don't understand. Farner. Ah. Ah, a lot of that better hold. Right over, right over, right over. Oh, 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 wait, wait a minute. My goodness, let, let's do this in English. All right. Lie down, Mr. Brandel. Now, I want you to ride the bicycle. Faster, 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 faster. Way faster. What are you doing? I'm coasting. Keep on, keep on. Way up Hollywood Boulevard. Faster. Way fast, fast, fast. Oh, oh. What, what's the matter? Oh, I got a puncture. Now, oh, this will make you feel fine, sir. Oh, oh, my back. Oh, you got a kink in your back. Yes, I got one of them back in Sweden, too. What do you mean? A kink. The queen's husband. You remember him. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, please. I don't mean that. Wait a minute. Let me do it to you for once. Strangle Lewis. Strangle Lewis. You'll have no trouble at the flagpole, sitter. Next. Gee, this seems a little bit shaky. Hey, something will take your mind off your work. Why, it's Joe E. Brown. I wonder if he sees us. Oh, Joe! Yoo-hoo! Quit rocking the boat. He's way out in Beverly Hill. Oh, I see a big tennis mat. Do you see anybody important? I see Charlie Chaplin with Paulette Goddard. Charlie Farrell and Robert Montgomery are on the court with the British champion, Fred Perry. Also, Harold Lloyd with his usual smile. Edmund Lowe is playing against Charlie Farrell. Robert Montgomery certainly swings a mean racket. And Loopy and Johnny Weismiller looking very much encaged. What a jolly bunch of racketeers. Mary Pickford is holding some of the trophies awarded the winners. Charlie Chaplin is congratulating the Englishwoman champion, Dorothy Rounds. Doesn't this beat tennis for a sport? I'll say it does. Next. I see Viola Dana and her husband, Jimmy Thompson, the golf pro. Hello there, dear. How are you? Hello. Fine. Listen, honey, you've been promising to give me a lesson for weeks. Have you time now? Well, now's the time. Let's get started. All right. What do I do? Put that hand back on there again now. Down, through, straight, and up. Now, you try it by yourself now. Take it easy. Keep your head down now. All right. That's fine. Try it again. Well, let's see you hit one, Jimmy. All right, Bing. Ow. Let's see you hit one now. Why, right, be tickled there. Here's the ball. How's that? Say, just before you hit it, I'd like to have you meet my wife. She wants to see you hit a ball. I'd like to meet her. Come here, honey. Bing, this is Viola. Hello, how, how are you? Like to see me hit one? Sure, I'd love to. Okay. Beautifully.
me. Come on, let's get started. All right. Suits me. Now, what do I do next? Oh, I'll let you hit a ball now, if you can. Well, come on, honey. I can't hold this all day. Well, I... I had some balls around here. I don't know where they went to. Wait a minute, I'll try and find some. Hello, Harry. Hello, Jimmy. What are you doing, trying to hit a golf ball? What am I doing trying to hit a golf ball? Say, did you find any balls around here? I lost a lot of golf balls. It's a dirty lie. Say, you sure you didn't find any balls around here? I'm positive I didn't find any balls around here. I'm sorry, Harry, very sorry. Goodbye. Oh, oh that's all right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I'll see. And gentlemen, the music you've heard played is Hollywood on Parade, our theme song. Toothpaste and motor cars and things we eat and wear are sung around on the air in theme song. Most movies that you see play up some melody. Where would I, Cliff Edwards, be without my theme song? And now we're going to treat you to the theme song of our feature. It's a number any jungle film might use. It's a haunting, taunting song, though, of the far mysterious Congo. And it's sung by its composer, Clarence Muse. Night and day, I find no peace. Sad, okay, it does not cease. Strange wild beat, so deep and low. Mad black feet must be the Congo. It's a sad river with a wild soul and a long. Indeed, ladies, but the little white pill is a golf ball. Look at that drive, all of 200 yards. 
A platinum-haired screen siren swings a mean golf club and a mean hip, if you get what I mean. And now she's going to putt. What's the ball? I said, what's the ball? You must agree that Miss Harlow shows good form. Buenos dias, amigos. Greetings from sunny Mexico, the land of hot foods and cold drinks, where the favorite sports are horse racing and bullfighting. The horse racing is for the Americanos, we Mexicanos prefer the good old sport of throwing the bull. Here is Alice White, inside Barlet, waiting for the first race. What? No beer? No, it is only ice water. They are watching something on the track. No, it isn't a big electric coaster. It is an American invention to control the way the horses start. What we really need is something to control the way they finish. There are the charming Bennett sisters, Constance and John, who are among our visitors today. That's Constance doing a good turn for someone. Carol Lombard has a tip on the winner, so she's telling her husband, William Power, in a hoarse whisper. But Bill likes to pick them himself. He's looking them over carefully. Take your time, Bill. There is prosperity. Everybody's betting on her. Richie Finney, second choice. Locomotive and war nurse are sure to show. Senores Wheeler and Wilsey pick them the same way. They are good judges of horse plays. They used to eat in French boarding houses. Here is Claudia Dell, away up in this grandstand. She wants to be sure that no fat men will jump up in front. Just when the race gets excited. Look who's with the judges. Our own Mexican star, Raquel Torres. Now, Raquel, how do you expect the judges to keep their minds on the track? Now, watch closely. One, two, three, they're off. Everybody's excited. Gary Langdon has five dollars on Warner. Holly Moran just played a last minute hunch of prosperity. The horse that was named after one of her pictures. Here they come, into the home stretch. Locomotive has the rail. War nurse is out in the front. Bosso is right behind her. But where is Prosperity? To bed, Polly. Prosperity is still around the corner. Adios, amigos. Now you've heard the different theme songs that they use for the prologue, feature picture, short and new. But the kind of a theme song now that wins acclaim is a ditty built around a movie de name. All the boys of Tin Pan Alley, right of Chloe, Min and Sally, Mary Ann and Jane and Betty and Noreen. But the cream songs of the dream songs are the star-inspired theme songs that they sing to lovely ladies of the screen. Plunk, plink. Oh, 
this elephant back to the zoo. She won't do. She won't do what? Well, we're making a Stoop Nagel and Bud comedy. And the director wants a later model. Her name is Annie. She'll well, take care. Give me your foot, Annie. Foot. Atta boy. Can I ride her? Sure. All right. Tell her head down. Head down, Annie. Head down. Head down. All right, trunk. Well, I'll be seeing you. Well, bye-bye. So long. Come on, Annie. Give her a little push, will you? Yeah, sure. Take her out. Go Come ahead. on, Annie. Oh. News flash. The steamship Lurlin arrives in Los Angeles Harbor, bringing many Hollywood screen celebrities from location in Hawaii. Here's the flower you ordered, Mr. Grant. Oh, okay, Frankie. Look, as soon as the boat docks, take them up to Miss Virginia Cheryl, but don't tell her I sent them. Leave it to me. Can you see her? No, not yet. Well, I can see Mary Bowling with Leo Carrillo and Bill Dargan. <laughs> Norman Foster is kissing his wife, Claudia Colbert. Leo Carrillo is watching them. Hey, Frankie, you better hurry and get up to that gang thing. Okay. Okay. Maybe I can fix it. My father was a plumber. Take 
it when they get it fixed. Have them bring it down to the Riding Academy and ask for Anita Stewart. I think it... You know, I, my car broke down. Well, that's too bad. Isn't that the limit? It certainly is. He's up. He's up. Which one? Yeah, he's down. He's up. He's up. He's leading now with his left. Now he's crossing with his right. I think he's got him. He's got him in a corner now. He's got him. He's pummeling the life out of him. He's down. Oh, it's all over. So the moral of this story is, kiddies, be good little piggies and the big bad wolf won't get you. Good night. Newsflash. Sidewalks of Hollywood become sidewalks of New York as film stars don Bowery attire for a novel Hollywood party. Among the first to arrive are Gene Raymond, Richard Dix, and Faye Ray. Say, buddy, you really want the autographs of those stars? I sure do. Well, I'll get them for you. George Raft with Gene Harlow and Arlene Judge. Uh, Mr. Raft, here's a letter for you. And if you'll sign, Miss Harlow. Mr. Raft. Mr. Raft. Thank you. Sam? Joe. Miss Judge, if you'll sign to Mr. Raft. Ah, maybe you can't wait. Wait till I hear we go again. Can I sign it? Yes, Mr. Raft. It's your letter. I think you better. All right, fine. Thank you. Constance Cummings and her husband on a bicycle built for two. Uh, I have a special delivery message for you. Will you sign here, Miss Cummings, please? Right here. Thank you. Oh, I have to take it. All right, we have to put the parasols down and drop to ride in. I'm sorry, it's not very good. Yeah, I know we will. All right, you ready? Sure. Who are you? Jeanette McDonald as a prima donna of the gay 90s. I have a uh, message for you, Miss McDonald. Will you sign here, please? Oh, dear, dear. I'm Anna Hill tonight. I'm not Miss McDonald. Oh, all right. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin with Paulette Goddard. Will you sign for this now, Mr. Chaplin? He has made that long. All right. Wow. <laughs> <Good morning>. <laughs> Miss Miriam Hopkins. George Bancroft as a ward boss. There it goes again. You sign, I'll have this only. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good night. 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 Well, uh, well, good Studio, I welcome you winners of the Search for Beauty contest to Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you. Hold it for a still, Buster. Look this way, Mr. Kraft. Don't move, girl. 
Well, we got it that time. Thanks. Thank you. I have cars to take you girls to the hotel. Oh, but we don't want to go to the hotel. We want to see some of Hollywood nights like we've read about. Why, don't make me laugh, girls. Hollywood's a nine o'clock town. You can't fool a Scots lassie. I've read all about Hollywood. Sure, and I've lost many a night sleeping her and reading about Hollywood. Oh, come on and say you'll show us the sights. I, I'm sorry to disappoint you, girls, but uh, I have a previous engagement. Oh, too bad. Oh, now, girl, just a minute now. Wait a minute. Hold it, hold it for the little camera. Smile for it. That's it. Why, hold... Lloyd Hamilton, how are you? Why, hello, Buster. Why, what brings you here, Lloyd? Well, I am a little bit modest, but uh, I want to tell you, uh, one of my fans, Mr. James Montgomery Ward, uh, sent me this little camera, mm. and he wanted me to shoot some shots of the nightlife of Hollywood. From here, I'm going to May West premiere at the uh, Chinese Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, I'm going to uh, Mr. DeMille's uh, anniversary at the studio. And then, I'm going to uh, a Hollywood party. Real still. This is Bill Henry, folks, broadcasting the May West premiere from the Chinese Theater in Hollywood, California. It's a great sight. The crowd is tremendous. The clicking you hear, folks, is from the telegraph keys in the press box, where the newspaper correspondents are describing to the world the brilliant spectacle presented here before us. And now listen to Harold Grayson and his band playing the song hit from Mae West's latest picture. The stars are arriving so rapidly we can scarcely keep track of them. Over there, I see Mr. and Mrs. Richard Barthelmus obliging the photographers. Ah, here comes that sterling screen actress, Alison Skipworth. And here's something that'll hit you right between the eyes. Jack Dempsey, Walter Houston, and Max Baer. Now some more celebrities are arriving in one of those big foreign cars. Just a minute, folks. I uh, don't seem to recognize them. You know who they are? Why, it's the Search for Beauty contest winner. Escorting Floyd Hamilton, Jack Oakey. <laughs> Come on out of breath. So, you know, I was over there in May West's dressing room just a minute ago, and I was kidding around with May a bit, and she stops me with this. She says, Oakey, just because a man says he wants to retire, it doesn't mean he owes all the money he wants. So, you know what I did? I just tiptoed out of the dressing room, and I ran all the way over here. Keep in touch with me. Oh, there is Bruce Cabot with Adrian Ames. Gee, I wish we had a picture of them. And now we see that scintillating personality, Loretta Young, escorted by Russ Colombo. George Rapp. <laughs> Hello, everybody. When I was a young fella, Horace Greeley said, go west, young man, go west. So I came west. But Miss West hasn't said to me, come up and see me sometime as yet. Charlie Chaplin has just arrived with Paulette Goddard, chaperoned by Jackie Cooper. And now the huge crowd is awed as the star of stars makes her appearance. Every feminine eye follows her dazzling gown. Every masculine eye, oh well, must we go into that? Mae West has come to town. made his first picture 20 years ago. Tis true. 
There's Mr. DeMille. Congratulations. Jack Holt. Richard Cromwell. It wouldn't be 20 years for Hatton. Stell Taylor. <laughs> Raymond Hatton. <laughs> and well, you Benny remember, Alexander. Contract was made in the shed, and you too, Ray. Yeah. And I had my dressing room right over there in that livery stable. <laughs> you thought I could act if I left my horse over at University? <laughs> well, you left your horse there, we put Ray in the store. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Do it with Will you hold that pose, folks? Please. Pardon me, I smell a rat. Tonight, Hollywood is staging a unique costume party. The stars attending are impersonating various other screen personalities. Here is Lois Wilson as Jackie Cooper in Skippy, and Gloria Swanson as Helen Hayes in The White Sister. What a night for the photographers. Gloria looks glorious, and her husband, Michael Farmer, looks very chinky as Warner Oland in Fu Manchu. What a picture. The white sister in the clutches of Fu Manchu. But don't worry, folks. Here comes someone to the rescue. It's Polly Moran as Anna Mae Wong in a Chinese version of Ha Cha Cha Cha. Fay Ray appears as she did in King Kong. And her husband, John Monk Saunders, as Lionel Barrymore in Svengali. Lillian Tashman and her husband, Edmund Lowe in a clever impersonation of Lionel Barrymore's Kringleine. Zeppo Marx, wearing the toupees of 10 other male stars from that great Hollywood mystery, to pay or not to pay. Groucho Marx as Rex the Wonder Horse, and Gary Cooper as, well, your guess is as good as mine. Chico Marx as one of the witches of Endor but we don't know which end. Mary Pickford as Gilda Gray, with Cary Grant as Jack Oakey. Frederick March doing a sprightly impersonation of Bobby Clark of Clark and McCullough. He dances, prances, and enhances many a picture. Jetta Goodall as the beautiful countess in uh, well, count us out. Set your traps for this one, folks. They're loose again. Lloyd Pantages as Minnie Mouse and Buster Collier as Mickey Mouse in Two Blind Mice. And if we're not mistaken, here comes the specialist in Sitting Pretty. As Mae West would say, you must come in sometime. Folks, it looks like the main event of the evening. A flock of nursemaids and Lloyd Hamilton as Baby Leroy. Hold it for a still, folks. 